Nitrox certification is the most common specialty scuba divers take after their initial open water training. However, if you don't take this critical step before you get in the water, you may be in for a very bad day. In this video, I'll cover what this step is, how to do it quickly so it doesn't take a lot of your time, and what the risks are if you don't do it before you get in the water. Let's get into it. I'm Thomas Hughes, a professional scuba instructor who teaches a variety of specialties as well, including the Enriched Air Diver, or Nitrox Diver specialty. Now, you may have seen this video and started wondering what Nitrox even is and how it's different than air. So let me go ahead and address that and get that out of the way before I dive too deep into the subject. And if you already know what Nitrox is and why you'd want to use it, feel free to skip ahead just a little bit. In scuba diving, Enriched Air Nitrox, commonly abbreviated as E-A-N-X, or just referred to as Nitrox, is any blend of gas of oxygen and nitrogen combined, where the oxygen level has been enriched to where there is a higher percentage than 21% oxygen. Normal air tanks that we breathe as scuba divers contain about 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen, not accounting for the tiny particulates of other gas molecules that make up less than 1% of the gas mixture. So when someone says they're diving nitrox, what they're referring to is that they are diving with a higher blend of oxygen than 21%. So most commonly, this is gonna be EANX32 or EANX36, which would be 32% oxygen or 36% oxygen respectively, with the remainder being the nitrogen blend. Diving with Nitrox is one of those things that does require a specialty certification, and it's a specialty card that people are actually gonna ask for, and you won't be able to get a Nitrox fill without this card. So this video is not a replacement for that, but it is a way to just kind of inform you generally about Nitrox and the things you need to do before you dive with it. There are a lot of benefits of Nitrox diving that I'll talk about a little bit later in this video, but it also comes with some huge risks, and that's why you cannot dive Nitrox without doing this first. Imagine for a moment that you're on a deeper dive, let's say to 100 feet or about 30.5 meters. The group of divers with you are all enjoying themselves when suddenly you look over at one of them and they just start to convulse violently underwater. While having the seizure, they spit out their regulator and unfortunately they end up drowning before anyone's able to help them. But what happened? Well, unfortunately, this is a story that's been documented multiple times by groups like Divers Alert Network, and it's found so often that the diver just didn't analyze their tank before they got in the water. This means they had no idea they were diving nitrox, and they wound up exceeding their MOD, or max operating depth, for the gas that they were breathing from, ultimately resulting in a seizure. I'll save specifics on the risks involved with not analyzing your gas for a little bit later, but for now, just know that not analyzing means that you have no idea what the gas mixture is that the content of the cylinder that you're about to breathe from underwater. Unfortunately, not all shops are reputable, and even if you're at a reputable one, people make mistakes, and something as common as just renting tanks, for example, might mean that there's a gas mixture in there from a previous diver that had the tank, and when the shop filled it, they didn't deplete the tank fully, so they didn't actually get it back down to 21% air, but there was leftover oxygen enrichment from the previous diver and you know maybe you're at 30% or something like that instead. And without analyzing it, you'd have no idea. This means that that tank of air that you just rented actually has a higher than 21% oxygen, so it's actually nitrox instead. Again, the risks of not analyzing your tank can be deadly, and I'll talk about those a little bit more later, but for now, just know that you should always analyze your tank before diving. But here's the kicker. Not every dive shop or even every dive master will bring an analyzer with you on the boat or the charter you're about to go on, so you won't be able to analyze it anyway. Ultimately, we are responsible for all of our own gear, including the gas mixture that's within our cylinders. This is where my friends at Nuver come into play. When I told them I wanted to make you a video about the importance of analyzing nitrox cylinders, they offered to send me their O2 Quick Stick for free, which is my favorite travel analyzer. Now, if you haven't heard of Nuver, they actually manufacture the O2 Quick Stick, as well as many other gas analyzers and gas compressors for both recreational and professional scuba divers. I have a link to their website, as well as the O2 Quick Stick itself, down in the links in the description, so you can go ahead and check it out for yourself. Now, if you ever dove nitrox before, I'm sure you know the pain of waiting for the analyzer to get passed around the whole boat so we can finally get to you, so you can go ahead and measure your one or two tanks for the dive for the day. The longer you wait, the more you just wanna go ahead and just say, forget it, I'm just gonna hook up my gear, trust that they told me it was 32%, and go ahead and just set my regulator up and gear up instead. But please, listen to me, do not give in to this temptation. 
the risks are just too high, and I talked about it some already, but I'll cover it more in just a moment. This is why I love the O2 Quick Stick, because it is a fast reading analyzer that can get you your full reading within about 15 seconds. To use it, you simply turn the knob clockwise to turn it on. Next, you'll need to calibrate it, so just let it get exposed to fresh air for a little bit, and then you can use that same knob that you used to turn it on to make small adjustments until it reads 20.9%, which is what it should read in normal fresh air. After you calibrate it once, you can go ahead and use it on all of your recreational nitrox tanks without needing to recalibrate it over and over again because it'll hold that calibration for you. When you finish, you can go ahead and turn it off by go ahead and turning that knob counterclockwise or anti-clockwise, depending on where you live in the world, all the way until the display turns off for you. To actually analyze a cylinder, we're gonna go ahead and open the valve on the cylinder just enough until a slight hiss can be heard steadily. Then you're gonna hold the sensor end of the quick stick against the cylinder itself, and that way the gas is allowed to pass into the sensor over the O2 sensor itself, and the reading on the screen will actually start to uptick to show you the percentage of oxygen inside the gas mixture. As a quick tip too, the sensor has some exhaust ports on the side that are tiny little pinholes, so make sure your fingers aren't covering those at all as you hold it against the cylinder, otherwise you'll get a bad reading. Then within about 15 seconds, the O2 reading on the screen should stabilize and you'll actually have your reading for your O2 percentage. Just remember to log your gas mixture and then put your percentage as well as your name and the MOD or max operating depth on your tank. And then make sure you change your computer as well if you're diving with a dive computer to the proper nitrox blend or the nitrox percentage in your gas settings on the dive computer itself. But what if the reading's wrong or it's not what you expected it to be? Well, there's a few different things here, and depending on the circumstances, you might want to just simply adjust your dive computer to the new percentage that you're seeing on the tank, and then doing a dive plan and seeing if you can still dive the depth that you wanted for the duration that you wanted, and everything else is going to be okay. You won't exceed an MOD limit or anything like that. If not, you're going to want to tell the shop that you need another tank blended, and you probably want to tell them anyway if it's more than just a couple percentage off, because they should really know that their blend is off or their membrane, if they're using that, is having problems. Another thing you might want to do is just double check that the analyzer is calibrated properly and working properly. And I gotta say, this is one of the things I love about the O2 Quick Stick as well, is that every single part of it is completely user replaceable, from the 9 volt battery that you can just unscrew, pop out, and replace if need be, to the O2 sensor and all the other parts in between. Okay, so now that you know how to analyze and why it's so crucial that you do this before you go diving, you might be asking then, how often should I analyze my scuba tank? Well, honestly, it should be done before every dive. So sometimes even while I'm at the shop, I analyze the tank, I put my name on it, goes on the boat, and then before I actually set up my rig and use that tank again to get in the water, I test it one more time just to be safe that no one jostled anything around or moved my name stiff around or something like that by accident. In my opinion, there are just too many risks involved with not analyzing, and using something like the Quick Stick is so fast and easy, especially when I bring my own and I'm not waiting for someone else's, that it just makes sense to do it every single time. For example, here's a real story that I witnessed personally firsthand right on the coast of North Carolina. There's a famous shipwreck of a German U-boat from World War II off the coast of North Carolina that was found, I think back in the 80s if I remember right. It's a nice big submarine that's sitting down there and it's a really cool part of history to explore, but it sits at about 110 feet below the surface. At the dive shop we chartered through, you had to either call ahead or when you signed in for the day, tell them what blend of nitrox you wanted for your gas mixture because everyone has different types of dive profiles and depending on what they were doing that day, they might have wanted different gas mixtures for the dive site itself. I heard one diver that was gonna be going on this dive site specifically, again to about 110 feet or 33 and a half meters, ask for 36% nitrox. Now, I don't wanna blame the person behind the counter or anything like that, but they were initially gonna allow this to happen until someone in line actually spoke up and said, hey, wait a second, the max operating depth or MOD of 36% nitrox is only 95 feet or about 29 meters, which would actually put them way past the max operating depth that they dove on this U-boat dive site at 110 feet or 33 and a half meters. This means that if that diver did dive with 36% blend, they would have been at severe risk if they dove on the submarine with that tank. But you might be asking to yourself, what's the big deal if they got 36% instead of 30% or 31%, which would have been way more appropriate for this dive site? Well, well, the risks involved about not analyzing your cylinders and the amount of oxygen exposure you have and things like that could be an entirely separate video that I might go into sometime in the future, but for now I'll mention just some of the big ones. First, like the story I just told, if you dive with too high of a percentage of 
oxygen. The atmospheric pressure, as you continue to dive deeper, causes the PPO2, or partial pressure of oxygen, to increase above a certain level that actually becomes toxic to our bodies and can cause CNS seizures, or central nervous system seizures. This is similar to the story I told earlier in the video where I said the diver just spit out their regulator because honestly, when you have a seizure, it's very hard for them to keep that regulator in their mouth, which means they're almost always going to drown. Another risk is that the O2 could actually be a lower percentage than what you expected. And if it's lower, this can change your dive plan entirely, whether that's the depth that you're at and the NDL because your computer is actually calculated to, let's say 32%, but you're diving in 28% instead. The NDL difference could mean that you go into decompression without realizing it and you could be at risk for the bends. Or if you are a tech diver and you are doing a decompression dive, your decompression timetable from your computer is gonna be completely off because you are again breathing the wrong percentage of gas because you have less O2 than what you actually thought you had. And if you're a tech diver not analyzing your tanks, you need to go back and take your tech classes again. Another risk is that our computers actually estimate using an algorithm how much OTUs or oxygen toxicity units our body's taking on, as well as our nitrogen load for things like our NDL and just how much nitrogen is built up in our tissues. If that calculation is off due to us setting the wrong oxygen percentage inside of the gas blend mixture setting, then the computer's not gonna be able to calculate this accurately. And that actually raises our risk for DCS or DCI, AKA decompression sickness or decompression illness. Okay, so with all of that said, I hope at this point in the video that I've absolutely convinced you that you need to analyze every tank before every dive. Hopefully you also realize how important it is for you to have your own personal nitrox analyzer that you can use and trust however you please without needing to rely on the dive master or the dive shop to provide one for you. Again, this is why I love the Nuver O2 Quick Stick because it has all user changeable parts, including the battery, which is just a simple nine volt that you can pick up pretty much everywhere, which makes it perfect for being that compact, lightweight size that I can take when I travel somewhere, as well as something that's just nice and lightweight to throw into my save a dive kit when I'm going to the local dive site. In my opinion, every Nitrox diver really should own their own analyzer. So again, I have a link down in the description to the one that I use, the Nuver. O2 quick stick. Now that you know how to dive with nitrox safely, you might still be asking yourself, but wait, if there's all these risks involved, why would I even want to dive with nitrox to begin with? Well, in this video, you'll learn how nitrox can help you stay underwater longer. Click or tap the screen now so you can check that out. And with that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.